Hello, my name is Jun Par. Today's video is a part of a video series covering four key components of tissue culturing. Today we'll go over media prep and sterile filtration, which play a crucial role for any type of tissue culturing workflow. Let's start with some basic information on the role of media itself. Simply put, media is a buffered salt solution supplemented with nutrients. Presence of buffering reagent, such as bicarbonate, will help it maintain physiological pH under 5% CO2 culturing condition, while the salt will provide optimal osmolality for cells. In some cases, HIPIS is also used to increase buffering capacity. For nutrients, media typically contains glucose, vitamin, and amino acids. And finally, when serum is added, the serum will provide source of growth factors, hormones, and attachment factors for cells. Now you're probably wondering about all the different formulations of media out there. In general, medium can be broadly defined based on their complexity. At one end, we have the basic basal medium, which are essentially buffer salt solutions containing amino acid, vitamin, and glucose. On the other end, we have more complex media formulated for specific cell types and applications. For example, commonly used basal media such as Modified Eagles Medium, MEM or MEM, or Dubelco's Modified Eagles Medium, DMEM, contains no protein or growth promoting agents. When supplemented with serum, these basal media are considered as a complete media and can be used for culturing wide range of cells. We also have a media such as RPMI, which can still be considered as a basic media, but gears towards hematopoietic cells with its pH 8 formulation. Now on the complex side, we then have mediums such as HAMS or isocodes DMEM, which cater towards narrower range of target cells and applications such as growing adipocytes or sporting rapidly proliferating high-density cell cultures. Another example of complex media is serum-free media, where the applications requiring the use of chemically defined or xeno-free media, such as a certain therapeutic manufacturing conditions. In most cases, complete formulation data can be obtained from the vendor website, so please take advantage of the available data. Now let's cover so-called supplements. These would be any additives added to the media to supplement and meet specific culturing needs. The most common supplement would be serum, which provides numerous growth and attachment factors for cells. In addition, it is a rich source of hormones, lipids, and minerals for cells. Most commonly used form of serum is fetal bovine serum, while other type of serum available are newborn calf serum and horse serum. Serums are subject to batch to batch variability. So it is important to test out different batches to identify the suitable serum for your needs. Please also make sure to obtain serum from reputable and well-established vendors who will supply you with certificate of analysis covering extensive list of quality measurements. Another common supplements are L-glutamine and antibiotics. L-glutamine provides additional nutrient for cells, and since this amino acid is unstable, it is often added during the media preparation before use. Antibiotics are used to minimize chance of contamination. Combination of penicillin and streptomycin is most often used. Once media has been supplemented with all the required additives, it is now considered complete media. Typical composition of very basic complete media is shown as an example here. However, please remember that the actual formulation of your complete media will depend on your specific need to grow and culture your cells, and it can include a variety of additional supplements such as specific growth factors, hormones, and enzymes. Now once the complete media has been prepared, the final step is to perform sterile filtration. 